Hey everybody, welcome back to Blake's Lakers. I'm Joe. Um, just want to do my uh, week three update on these uh, meat birds. Um, they're growing really well. I mean, both both varieties are doing really good. I still have the old runty one. He's, he's hanging in there. I don't know. He gets big enough to be a little Cornish roaster. That's what I'll butcher him as. Um, but I'm doing my daily moves out here. I got him out in the chicken tractor this week. Um, it's not 100% done to where I want it to be, but it's working. I needed to get them out of that brooder. Um, so right now I'm using my trough style feeders in here. I just pick them up out and set them off and fill them every day or twice a day. Um, of course, they're going through a bunch of feed right now. Um, and I'm just using my cup water still. It's working better out here in the pasture than it was um when I, the one that I had in the brooder, they got a bucket one that I'm using right now. It'll, <clears throat> once they get bigger, they'll step on those cups and actually turn them. Um, but yeah, you can see they're going nuts over feed. Um, just got the big feeder out today. I was using the small uh, right there. And for some reason they weren't, I don't know if their heads were getting too big or what. I've never heard of that, but. They, they weren't finishing the feed out of there, and they're acting like they're crazy hungry, as you can see. And all of them were still half full the last couple days, so I decided to switch it to this, these open tops. Um, see if they do any better. I had this small one in here last night, and they cleaned it right up completely. So, uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how, they, how they do. Um, but right now, they're growing good. They're almost fully feathered out, and... Uh, everybody's they're pretty consistent the the Cornish cross are definitely still thicker than the Freedom Rangers um, which is expected they're supposed to be slower growing um, but other than that they're all all doing good except for Pee Wee over here here he is you see how much smaller he is than the rest of them he gets picked on a little bit um, I've tried throwing separate food over to him in front of him and He's just not as interested in the feed as the rest of these guys are. So like I said, as long as he lives and he grows to be roaster size, you know, a couple pounds, I'll just do that and leave him whole for the crock pot or the rotisserie cooker we got. Um, but yeah, that's where we're at right now with these guys. They're, they're growing really well and <clears throat> they're eating good. and Everybody's doing well. We counted them when we moved out here. We are down to... 136 birds um we lost a few more than i'd like we usually don't lose that many at all usually three five birds at the most um but i think uh, not getting these chicken tractors done on time like i wanted to uh kind of put a damper on that um that brooder just isn't big enough for 150 birds to, to stay in the brooder for two and a half weeks. Uh, so next year, I'd like to build a second one and split whatever I do 50-50. Uh, that's my game plan for next year. Um, we'll see where we're at with the butcher shop and whatnot. Um, but yeah, I wanted to, wanted to do a quick uh, week three update on these guys and show you what I'm doing. Uh, so far the chicken tractor is working great. I don't have wheels for the back, but I've been able to slide this thing along by myself uh, with no major issues. I just got to take it easy so I'm not running any chicks over. But usually these guys are hungry enough. They come right to the front of the, the tractor uh, waiting to be fed. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, everybody's doing good so far. Uh, I am happy with this Cornish variety from the Freedom Ranger Hatchery. I'd like to try to do uh, another bigger batch next year. Um, I like the Cornish because they're a little bit quicker turnaround. Uh, but I also like the Freedom Rangers because they give me a little bit more flexibility and butchering schedule and stuff. They're not so... Uh, fragile as these Cornish cross. But this variety might not be. I don't know. I've had good luck with the Freedom Ranger hatchery stuff <clears throat> so far but um yeah moving them moving them trying to move them twice a day uh some days i don't get up here in time to move them twice a day uh they still get fed twice a day it's just 
I'll be running a little bit late in the morning trying to get kids around and stuff. Um, spreading some nice fertilizer out here across the this upper pasture. It's exactly what I want. I'm going to start going out through the other pasture here and oh I don't know I think I got four, four more days in this piece and then I'm going to slide them right through that gate and go right out through that pasture with them. Um, so yeah. Yeah, they're uh, they're doing really good, um, except for little Pee Wee, but he's all right. Let's see what happens with him. But um, we are trying to put together a chicken processing class. Um, if any of our viewers are semi-local uh, and want to participate in that. Um, I'd like to start doing small classes. Uh, I'm trying to do this first one at, you know, no more than six to eight people. Um, so I can, I can individually show everybody what to do. It's going to be, um, full butchering, um, from start to finish, a uh, complete carcass breakdown. Um, talk about some stuff that you can do with the carcasses and, um, there's going to be lunch with that, and I am going to let each person take a bird home. Cut down any way you'd like. You could take it whole, or uh, we can break it down and package it like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. We've got some interest in it already. I haven't had any deposits on the class. Um, it's not super expensive. We're trying to keep the cost down as much as possible, but we got to be able to make a little bit off of it at the same time. Um, Depending on how it goes will be how many birds we, we put through on a good morning process uh, Me and one or two other people can do 50 birds in a day and that's full breakdown on the birds. That's not whole birds packaged um, I've got it down where Depends on what we're doing with them and what we're we're keeping out of them, you know on how we do it uh, I am gonna go over uh, cleaning gizzards uh, pulling livers and stuff out too. Um, I, I just think it'll be a good thing. So if anybody local or semi-local, if you, if you guys want to travel, um, that'd be okay with me. Um, so that's going to be July 29th. Uh, I'm going to try starting a class about 8 a.m. I don't want to go super early. I like to start earlier than that generally, but I try to keep in mind that some people will be traveling in the morning and stuff. And that'll give me time to get my morning chores done and get equipment set up and get Scalder running and the whole nine yards. So I am, I'm excited about it and I'm hoping that there's more interest in it. Uh, Cause I'd like to set up some other classes for other smaller animals. Um, in the future if this one pans out and I might do some more chicken processing classes and it might expand from there I'm not sure just kind of um, going with it and seeing seeing how everything turns out with this class um, so if you guys could like comment subscribe share uh, click the notifications bell and uh, hope to catch you guys on the next one